forget RGB, forget HSL. This is a brand new color system by Google and it will literally change the way we look at colors, the way we implement colors, the way we pick colors. It's also going to make the whole color science process or the color selection process easier. So without further ado, let's get started with today's video. All right, so there are two main color spectrums. One is RGB, red, green, blue. Everybody knows about that. Web developers use it, designers use it. We all know what RGB stands for. It's red, green, and blue. This basically means if you mix these three colors, we'll come up with certain colors and certain palettes that you can work with. HSL, on the other hand, is based on hue, saturation, and luminosity or lightness, which basically means that different hues of a certain color are used, uh, different saturation levels are used. So if you go towards the gray end of the spectrum, it will become less saturated. And if you go towards the color, then it'll become more saturated. And lightness is, of course, how light or dark the color is. Now, Google has taken the liberty to introduce a brand new color system or color spectrum called HCT. And this color tech is going to help us a lot. It's called Hue Chroma Tone. Hue, of course, means whether it's a blue hue, green hue, yellow hue, line of color, or what hue of color we are choosing. Here. Chroma is there to showcase how intense that color is, whether it is a very sharp, intense looking color or a more sober, subtle looking color. Tone is what Google is really bringing in onto the table, really focusing on. Now, what Google says is that colors are based on perception. Most people will consider certain colors sharper or harsher, certain other colors less sharp, less harsh. Google is bringing a new concept into the color game called perceptual colors. What we perceive a certain color to be as and whether that affects the way we think about it or the emotions that come out of it. Now I'm going to quickly show you how tone is going to help you with colors. Now on screen you can see there's a comparison between HCT and HSL, which is more commonly used. So here the perceived lightness of a color is the gray that we've is being used. And we're using gray because when it comes to light, gray has been taken as a benchmark. Okay, gray is the most neutral out of everything else. We use this concept in photography, we use this for digital, we use this for, for screens, etc. The yellow here is extremely sharp to the eyes. It's very bright, it's very sharp. And here the lightness value of HSL for all of these colors on screen is the same. Why? Because HSL does not differentiate based on human's perception. It takes the color as it is on a spectrum and whether it is technically correct or not. However, HCT here is going one step ahead and taking human's perception of a color or a tone, giving all these colors a score. So as you can see, the light yellow is perceived lightness is the most. It's the most light color here. So the score is 96. Now, if you go towards the same, the same yellow has been turned into this uh, super light turquoise or teal. We're taking the H HCT value a little less because it's less sharp and harsh on the eyes. It's less lighter on the eyes. The red here again is super light red, but the HCT value is so low. The, the score is so low as, and with the blue, it's barely anything, 33. Now all these are different perceived lightnesses of this color. And that way we get to differentiate them a little better rather than giving them a neutral score based on their position of the color spectrum. Now what Google has done here is just shown a basic example, just out of blue. Okay, just out of blue, you can take out an entire spectrum based on perceived lightness. Now HTC also allows us to create much smoother transition between colors because now it's more about what we see than what it technically means. So as you can see, the HTC as compared to all the color standards, including RGB, is completely different and also looks one of the best. As you can see, the colorways on all these gradients, the same colors are being used, but the way it's being implemented in HTC, even RGB cannot match the, the soothness of the color, so as to say, the perceived soothness. Now, the next topic we'll come to is contrast. How color contrast will be used along with HCT. Color here, as you can see, there are two paintings. One, sober, nice painting on the left. Right, it's the black and white version of that painting. Now, quickly pause the video and tell me what's the difference between these photos. What's changed? What is missing? What is different? Awesome. Now that you've commented, I'm going to tell you the one on the right 
has no sun. Now, if you look at this painting on the right, there is literally no sun. See, when somebody who cannot look at colors the way we do, where the normal human eye can, they often miss out on colors or they might see a black and white image like that. The contrast must maintain across different colors, across different uh, modes and even work for accessibility. So here the perceived color, even though orange is a huge contrast in the first one, it is of no value in the second one. So here, what they want to say is that the color themselves don't matter. What matters is the tone of the color, the lightness of the color, the chroma of the color. So here on the left, chroma is fine, hue is fine, but what's missing is the tone of the color. On the right, as you can see, since one of these was missing, it's all gone. It's literally vanished. Now, Google is also looking at something called dynamic color because color systems can often scale. You might be making a design system under which 10 different applications will be created. So when we're looking at that, we want that the color should scale first of all. Second of all, it should blend in with all the elements that there is while maintaining that contrast ratio. So here, as you can see on screen, so as you can see on screen, personalized color at scale, they've shown with the same, literal same image, they have broken the image down based on their AI systems which are in place. It breaks an image down and as you can see, all these colors come alive on screen. So there are certain colors which are really standing out and certain which are not standing out as much in the, in the terms of perceived tones, nothing else. Now on the right, they have created a performance variant for this which means even if you say you have very slow 2G internet, it will still load a lot of this color and the computer will, or the software will be able to render a lot of this color without them having to deplete the meaning of the image or deplete the meaning of the element. Now, what if we want to look at this from a technical point of view for developers, for techies, for people creating the product at the end of the day. So right now they have this whole color system already prepared for Dart, Java and TypeScript. So you're looking at a lot of options when it comes to say creating applications or implementing. Now Google has introduced a set of tools as well as ways to get your colors to be more dynamic, to follow this HCT and to be able to understand colors better. So the first one is this dynamic color harmony, designing harmony into dynamic colors. This is a really cool article that I found through this uh, very source. And you'll be able to see in each image how they've implemented the colors and they're giving nice instructions, almost like a text-based tutorial to get started with this. They've also showcased the algorithm that they've used to create color harmony across various applications and systems. In fact, all the Google and material design tools which help you decide color, pick colors, etc., are working with HCT already. I will have a few links in the description so that you can check out some of these tools. Uh, some are even in Figma to help you select better colors based on these principles. So what did we learn today? What's the whole summary of everything that we learned today? What about HCT? Or hue, chroma and tone are covering certain very important aspects of the color system. Now, the first one is that the colors should be in harmony while having contrast. So there are, there's dynamic color, which changes based on uh, the colors of an image or a wallpaper. At, at the same time, there's contrast between different tones. The colors are definitely more expressive now because the colors are being chosen based on the perception of the human eye, rather than a bunch of jargon being thrown at you. Also, it's much more easy to pick up now. It's much more easy to learn about it and to kind of implement it in your daily tasks rather than having to do 10 different equations or calculations to be able to come to the perfect colors. Bringing a new system that allows both designers and developers to create designs and to choose colors in harmony. Now there won't be any differences because of course there is perception. I hope you've understood much more about HCT. I suggest go checking out the links in the description to read the articles in detail. Uh, what they have to, what the color scientists at Google have to say, 
and what you, and how you can implement it further. I'm more of a messenger in this video about HCT, just introducing you to it, but there's a lot more deeper inside it. I hope you enjoyed this short video. If you did, go ahead, press the like button and also leave a comment about what you thought, about what you thought about HCT color system and the new color spectrum and what you think about the perception of colors. I'll see you every Monday and Thursday. Until next time, take care. God bless.